good guys, it's Ilsen 4K, and today we're continuing onward with Halloween 3 Into the Unknown here on my channel. For those of you asking, what the hell is Halloween? Halloween is a month-long celebration of horror movies that take place on or around Halloween that we do here on my channel for the third year in a row now. Yes, the third year. Now, we're going to do things a little bit different this year because we're actually going to go do lesser-known films of this genre that everybody doesn't seem to know because it seems everybody knows the mainstream hits that take place on Halloween. But this time around, we're doing something a little lesser-known, like I said, hence the title, Into the Unknown. And today, I seem to have a known unknown that people seem to know about, but not enough people seem to know about, and that really makes me upset. So we had to cover it. It's a very charming horror film that's actually a horror comedy while still being very gory and violent. And of course, I'm talking about 2004's Satan's Little Helper. 2004. Yes, the year I graduated high school, this film came out, and I'm so upset I only found it, like, two years ago. And it's really awesome, though. It's something you definitely need to check out. Best way to describe it is, what would happen if a director from a Disney Channel movie from the 1990s was asked to do a horror movie while keeping that goofy cheese that we all know in those movies and still keeping it a total horror movie and totally violent. And the child acting in this is really really the showstopper. I mean, you're really just gonna get blown away when you see how good this kid in this film acts if you haven't seen it already. So definitely stick around so that way I can tell you more about this film. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, and make sure you stick around all month long for more Halloween 3 Into the Unknown, unknown horror films of the un unknown. I don't know. might be one of my favorite plots ever in a comedy horror film or maybe a horror film overall I don't know but it's so incredibly awesome we start out with nine-year-old Dougie yes nine-year-old Dougie one of the greatest things to ever happen to the horror world that nobody seems to know about playing a video game called Satan's Little Helper and I mean he is really obsessed with this game and of course yes it's funny the fact that they actually gave the title of the movie right away in the beginning ha 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 10 points uh, 50 points I'm getting so good at being helped, Dougie. Shh, I'm on the Can phone. Can I play online if all my homework? Whole idea is that when you play Satan's little helper, you help Satan get back to hell. Rather fascinating thing. I'd like to see a real video game on it. He gets really excited, though, when his sister Jenna is about to come home from college, but gets really upset when he finds out that Jenna brought her boyfriend, Alex, and doesn't exactly know what to do, so he kind of storms off, and Jenna and the boyfriend try and figure out what to do. Two, I figure we can all go trick-or-treating together. No! Dougie! Kind of Alex comes up with the great idea to dress up as Satan for Halloween to try and win Dougie's friendship over, and of course the girlfriend and the mother think it's great. You know, I was just thinking, your brother's so into this game. Maybe I'll dress as Satan for him for Halloween. Oh, that's a great idea. I figured, I've lived with Satan all While that's happening though, Dougie has wandered off on his own and found a man dressed in a really crazy mask and a really awesome snazzy suit that again, I love to death, and asks him, are you Satan after this individual just got done killing someone and propping them up as a Halloween decoration? He nods his head yes, and Dougie naively believes that this must really be Satan, and asks Satan, hey, will you help me beat up Alex? And proceeds to actually get Alex jumped and left for dead as well. It just goes off the hinges immediately. From there, Satan goes home and everyone believes it to be Alex, even though Satan gets a little handsy with Dougie's sister, and she proceeds to believe it's just because he's really devoted to the whole affair of what he's trying to be, and she thinks it's really awesome. From there, Dougie and Satan go out to a store and try and buy candy, where they end up shoplifting in one of the greatest scenes that you've ever seen in a horror movie. But we didn't pay! And from there, the guy who tries to stop him after they go shoplifting a bagger gets murdered. And from this point forward, we just see a lot of chaos and mayhem, with Dougie eventually figuring out that this guy is actually trying to kill people, and everyone is getting really nervous about him coming back, and they try and find a way to defeat him. <laughs> And it's just, again, it's something that really, the whole story is just awesome. I don't want to spoil all the fun little points. Because there's so many fun little points and you have to watch it. And if you have watched it, you know exactly what I mean. Don't you know anything? Satan does not have to pay. I'm his helper and I say, for this you shall die. Yeah, well that's great, but I'm not playing any games. If I had to pick the best way to describe this film, it would be wildly unhinged and wildly amazing. 
it's actually a great reminder that creativity exists not just in the indie horror world but in the whole indie filmmaking world and it's something that really took a chance and did great the kid that plays dougie is one of the greatest well cast actors i've ever seen in a horror movie ever even when he realizes that what he thinks is fake is real he still just seems so dumb and so oblivious to everything around him and it's just he pulls it off so well what even adds more to this whole Disney Channel vibe is the family and everyone involved. I'm talking Ducky's mom, the boyfriend, the sister, the everybody is just looks like they came right out of a Disney Channel movie. And they just add to this whole on-screen air chemistry that really makes it seem like that's how they did it. It's something that is just so cool and I love it to death. And what's really fascinating is even Satan himself, while being an absolutely violent murderer in every aspect, is absolutely like hilarious. He's just some guy in like a Halloween mask with matching gloves, wearing a suit that's really snazzy, by the way. I like that suit a lot. That suit is really cool. And he's just this whole other entity and being that they really just turn into something that's absolutely hilarious. I mean, he is one of the funniest and still scariest killers of them all. And another thing I really have to talk about is his kills. The gore in this is absolutely insane. I mean, it is a total over-the-top gore fest at times. Again, to the point where he kills a cat and he actually disembowels someone in this film and wraps their guts around a candelabra. I can't show that on YouTube, obviously, but you definitely need to see it because it's just one of the many cool aspects of this film in terms of how violent it is. It's really awesome in that aspect. But again, the real magical thing about this whole film is how even the kills have this whole Disney Channel-esque vibe to them and at times sometimes I feel like I'm talking about that too much and sometimes it's a little too Disney Channel-esque but out of nowhere it just snaps right back into what you were watching it becomes wildly unhinged again it's totally something that if you've seen it you know exactly what I mean and you either love it or you hate it but a lot more people seem to love it that know about it but the sad thing again is not many people seem to know about it so I hope we get some people to watch it after this uh, pardon me Can you pose for a picture? Well, I actually almost reviewed this movie last year for Halloween 2 on my channel, but I tried to sit through it and I just couldn't get more than halfway through it. And I think the problem was I was just too burnt out on too many movies and I couldn't get behind it. And I think I had already done a lot of those reviews and I just couldn't get behind it. So I was like, you know what though? I should give it a go one more time this year just because every time I ask someone about it, they seem to not know about it. And a lot more people seem to not know about it than know about it, as I've been saying the whole review. And I'm really glad I did that because this movie is awesome. I mean, it is something that just put a smile on my face and I couldn't get over how well done it was and how it exists in its own vacuum. And it's just a really great reminder that not every film I watched this year, because up until this point, I was watching some really bad films isn't a bad film, that there are some solid oddball films out there, and this is definitely one of them. And while this is totally a mid-2000s indie horror film, it doesn't feel very low budget, it's actually very well polished and awesomely executed. Again, it's something you need to see to really appreciate. If not for the fact that this Satan character is one of my favorite characters of all time now. I mean, the whole Satan thing is just, at first I didn't really like it, it didn't really grow on me. Like I said, I tried to watch it last year, but I just couldn't even get into the character. And slowly but steadily, before that film was probably like a quarter of the way through, I was absolutely in love with the character and thought it was just fantastic, the bond he had with the whole Dougie character. And the child actor, again, is just so fucking vulnerable and stupid and oblivious until he's not. And even then, he's still just so... I don't know, it's just awesome. It's one of those things that if you have seen it, you should really show your friends. And if you haven't seen it, you should watch it with your friends to see how you all feel on it. Because again, it's got this like divisive vibe between it. Like some people like it, some people don't. And it's never like an in the middle of the road. And the film is also really a reminder that love it or hate it, bold and brave doesn't always have to be boring. And I've said that about a couple films on this review. There's a lot of films that were bold and brave, but just were kind of boring. And I reviewed, I think one or two of them this year. And it's just not that, it's bold, brave, and it's wildly unhinged. It's awesome to the point where you can't even believe it exists because everything about it is just so well pulled together. And again, there's just nothing else like it out there. It's something you totally have to see. And I really actually hope we get a sequel for this. And thanks for watching the channel. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and stick around all month long for more Halloween 3 Into the Unknown where we review horror movies that take place on or around Halloween. And don't forget, catch me every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, twitch.tv backslash illtv4k, and then on Saturday nights for the Saturday Night Spooktacular, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, twitch.tv backslash illtv4k, and make sure you stick around all month long. And don't forget, you're watching Ill TV, where if it's pop culture, you know it pops up here.
Happy Halloween on behalf of ILL TV, where if it's pop culture, you know it pops up here.